Robert Rosen, and he is someone with the inside scoop. Can I show it? Sure. Yeah, he has got the inside scoop of Mr. John Lennon, whose birthday was yesterday. And, um, hey. Yeah, and, and you, you always have a lot to say about him. And I've been hearing a lot of stuff about John Lennon lately. Like, people who knew him or, like, that used to wander around the East Village with him have been sharing stories unsolicitedly with me, and you're like the authority on John Lennon, so maybe um, you can clear some stuff up. Um, so I've been told. You know, what would you like me to clear up? Well, first talk about, um, weren't you just doing some fabulous things as usual with your writing and your... Well, I got a new book out. Nowhere Man came out 12 years ago. My new book, my new book is Beaver Street. Uh, that came out in the U.S. a couple of months ago, and it's available everywhere. It's been getting some rave reviews. So yeah, and what's it about a little bit? Um, it is what I call an investigative memoir. It's about the 15 years, 16 years that I worked in pornography as a magazine editor, and I use that as a taking off point to show the history of the late 20th century through a pornographic lens. Now, before you had mentioned Spiro Agnew, one of the main themes of the book is that the biggest crooks cry, ban, cry ban pornography the loudest, and they always get caught. And Spiro Agnew, I've got in here as one of the yeah. one of the Fab Four anti-porn warriors of now, the 20th century. Do you think he was century. really watching it? Excuse me? Do you, do you think he watched it more than most? Oh, I, well, you know, he... Isn't it usually the people that call it dress? taboo? I don't know if he wore a, a dress. I'm sure he studied his pornography very carefully. Okay. So he could travel around condemning it and you know, you trying to ban pornography in the United States before he was uh, thrown out of office for taking bribes and whatnot. Yeah, that old Spiro Agnew. So, you know, Richard Nixon, Spiro Agnew... Edwin Meese, the I mean, Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I mean, these are what, they're all in the book? They're all in the book. You got yeah. Hoover in there too? Who? Hoover. Oh, Hoover. No, I didn't really mention Hoover. No, it's more like, uh, no, Hoover somehow didn't make it. Oh, sorry. He was vacuuming somewhere. He was vacuuming. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he probably was, you know, anti porn. Now, where is Beaver Street? It's or everywhere. Is, is, well, is you it know, the Beaver? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, Beaver Street. Yeah. No, Beaver Street is a metaphorical That's place. what I'm thinking. I mean, there really is a Beaver Street in New York City, and we had uh, a big launch event there on Beaver Street at the Killarney Rose a few months ago. Cool. But the reason I called it Beaver Street is it's really a story about money. And Beaver Street is right by Wall Street, so you know it's just right. kind of the metaphor of you know. We should Wall say that he worked on Wall Street. He worked on Wall Street. Oh, we got to so watch between Broad and Beaver. Ah, so that you know Broad and Beaver. Broad and Beaver. Wow, it's so like a light bulb just went off. That's, that's no pun intended, right? That's that was on purpose. Yeah. Well, that, that's oh, all we were saying. Oh, those dirty men! I never realized. Broad and Beaver. Like Dwayne and Reed were next to each other. Yeah. But Broad and Beaver. Broad and Beaver. Oh, that's where the tape on you. Listen, geez. <laughs> Let's go for a box lunch between Broad and Beaver. Oh, my God. That is how I got the title. I was walking around one day, just wandering, wandering. I needed a title for the book, something catchier than a history of modern pornography. I looked up. I was on the corner of Broad and Beaver. And I said, Look that's, that. Wow. that's that was a, your message, corner. a message from on high. This yeah. book needs to be called Beaver. Beaver. Yeah, but yeah. funny. But Broad and Beaver. If Beaver walked another block down Water Street. <laughs> no, a Broad is a girl and a Beaver is a Beaver. So I'm like, come on. If yeah. you walked another block and urinated, it could have been water. <laughs> Because that's the block down for us. There you go. Or you're breaking your water through your beaver. Breaking your water. We've been breaking my water on beaver. <laughs> the broad broke water on beaver. We're getting out of control yeah. here. Yeah. All right. So, so back What's to you. Name? So, yeah. all right. So John Lennon and Beaver Street. Yes. All right? Those are my two books. Two amazing books. Now, the John Lennon, I know we spoke last time. This is his diaries. Um, many, many years ago, uh, in 1981, five months after John was killed, I was given his diaries by his personal assistant, Fred Seaman, whose birthday is today. Seaman? Ah! 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 Ah!
keep it together here. Okay. <laughs> Fred. <laughs> Fred was John's personal assistant. He was with John in Bermuda the summer of uh, 1980 when John was putting together the demo tape for his last album, which was Double Fantasy. Yeah, which, and yeah. I talk about this in the first chapter. When he was down there with John, John had a premonition that something was going to happen to him. And he told Fred that if something should happen to him, it was his job to tell the true story of his final years. And now, is it true that John Lennon had a room in his apartment that he would get locked into and, and do lots of drugs? I never heard that before. Okay. <laughs> Someone recently just told me that. John Josie Hotel. spent a lot of time oh hanging, around, hanging around his bedroom locked in there. I mean, it was his bedroom. Ah, so he and, was that you know, he would sit in bed and he would watch TV and he'd smoke a lot of weed. Yeah, okay. this is all This is all in, no, not Beaver Street, in nowhere. Man. Right, <laughs> yeah. I well, get the books confused sometimes. Uh, Where was Oboe at this time? Was she in room she room? was down in Studio One doing business. Right, oh. always doing business. Is that right? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. She was a businesswoman. She yeah. did business. Yeah. And she's still a business, she do a business That's what Yoko Has does. Has she read the book? Uh, have you she, met Yoko? Uh, yes, I have. I oh, have uh, spent time in Yoko's presence. Uh, I don't know if she's read the book. I'm sure her attorneys okay. have read the book. I'm so sure. it's a Yoko uh, a nay or a pro yay for this uh, book? No, the Lennon camp is very much against the book. Right. They would have preferred it was not published. So this is like the, un is it an unauthorized? It is completely unauthorized. Okay, but but it's true. It's true, yes. It's, you know, absolutely true. Uh, you know, people say, oh, yeah. it's a lie, it's a lie, but n it's been 12 years now, nobody has been able to point to one lie in the book. I'm still waiting, you know, who's ever watching, you want to point out some lies, go ahead. So, so on a random page, can you read like just something from the book? Let me like, read the first paragraph. Okay. The first paragraph All right. is a good place to start. There you go. Uh, this is the first chapter. It's called John Lennon's Diaries. Five days after John Lennon was murdered, his personal assistant, Fred Seaman, a close friend, came to my apartment. He was visibly shaken, his eyes bloodshot, tears streaming down his face. There was work to be done, he said. The previous summer, during an extended stay in Bermuda, John had told him that if anything should happen to him, it was Seaman's job to write the true story of his final years. It would not be the official tale of a happy, eccentric house husband raising Sean and baking bread while Yoko ran the family business. Instead, it would be the story of a tormented superstar, a prisoner of his fame, locked in his bedroom raving about Jesus Christ while a retinue of servants tended to his every need. Wow. Uh, sounds like film noir mo uh, movie here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me? It sounds like one of those black and white film noir movies. Uh, yeah, you can look like at it that way. Oh, uh, you know, the final chapter right. is about Mark David Chapman, and it's totally film noir. The right. first part of the book takes you inside John Lennon's head. The final part of the book, which I call The Coda, takes you inside Mark David Chapman's head. And, you know, they're both, well, you know, Chapman's head is a really scary place to be. Oh. You know, so wait, so he met Chapman a couple times. He met Chapman once, that the day that he was killed, the, the day that he was killed, he came out of, of the Dakota on his way to the recording studio, and Chapman had the Double Fantasy album, and he approached Lennon, he asked him for a job, and he gave him the Double Fantasy album, to sign. Right, I, I, I saw that in the Lindsay Lohan movie. Right. <laughs> right. Go Lindsay! Ch chapter 27, they got the title from Nowhere Man. Ah. You got me hooked on the book right up with the first paragraph you read. You already got me interested in it. Well, so where can he get the book? He can get the book anywhere. You know, it's okay. all over the internet. And if you're in uh, New York City, Beaver Street is available in two really good independent um, stores, Shakespeare's and McNally Jackson's. So uh, always better to buy from the uh, independent mm -hmm. stores. Go for buy you, online Robert if you can avoid it. Go to Shakespeare's. Go to McNally Jackson. Good for you. All right. Now you had something. You say magnificent. Oh, Sig well, yeah. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Say Money Feet. Now I was just down there today. Yeah, were they an indie little boutique? Is that yeah, on I mean, McDougal Street. Yeah, oh, they were on McDougal down there. They just moved yeah. a few months ago, 328 East 9th Street. Uh -huh. And my friend Alfred there and. 
He's making me, today that I came down there before the show, and he's making me an official, one of a kind Osama Bin Laden ring with a jewel featuring the headshot of Osama in it. You know, so this is going to be one of a kind and a conversation piece for me to you know, walk around with. There you go. Just another conversation piece. So did you piece. used to go there on, on, on McDougal? It's right down the block, or it used to be right down the block from my house. Right. right. Yeah. 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 They've been there since 1959. And they had to move because everybody has to move, right? Yeah. What's going on? What do you think of New York City today? You know, it's turning into like one big generic mega city, a, a gilded ghetto. A, Did a you grow up here? I grew up in Brooklyn, which is actually how Beaver Street starts. It talks about being in my father's candy store on Church Avenue in Brooklyn and people coming in and asking where he kept the dirty books. And, uh, you know, that Beaver Street had he still had this candy store, would have been like a perfect fit for the, um, for the dirty book rack. We're starting to get a skeleton in the closet. So were you young, you, did you run down and look at all the books? And, uh... Well, that, that's not even my skeleton. It was his research for the book. Uh, that's not my skeleton. All right, what's your skeleton uh, today, Robert? You want a skeleton? Yeah. We've been working on this. Uh, Yay. You remember Mary Lynn. Of course. My wife. Okay. Uh, the skeleton is Mary Lynn, my wife, used to be an ex-nun. Or not used to be. She is an ex. -nun. So really? So you met her and she said, "I'm not going to be in no, the no, 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 no. Did she you got, convert her? No, 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 no. She got out of the convent long before she met me. I mean, you know, she decided. Well, that's her skeleton, isn't it? Well, I married one, but all right, I'm, no, not, there you go. I'm not finished. Okay. I'm not finished. Oh, in the good. Early chapter of Beaver uh -oh. Street. What a lot of people who know me find really ironic was that in City College, when I was the editor of the student paper there. We ran a cartoon of a nun masturbating with a crucifix. And oh. we, we, we got into a lot of trouble for this. We were condemned Good for you, in Robert the United States Senate. And wow. we got, you know, people just found it very ironic that after going through this whole thing with the famous masturbating nun cartoon from City College, you I went off and married an ex nun. Who was. Oh. And I'm an older boy, remember that. There you go. And we have our skeleton bucket because the angels really and, pulled one on us. And I used to call oral sex sexual uh -huh. communion. Uh, what did Sandusky call it? I don't know what he calls it. I used to call oral sex sexual communion. All right, close your eyes and see what you get from the skeleton bucket. Because the angels are playing with us today. A condom! There you a go. A condom, look. I could have had a condom. And it's a red one. It's a red one. And it blows in the rock hole. Website. So how can oh, people My like? website is robertrosennyc.com. Condom? Yeah, nyc.com. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, you can find everything on there about Beaver everything. Street, about Nowhere Man, about, you know, God knows what. Are you working on anything now? I am working on a novel, which I, I'm hopefully coming down a whole stretch. It's called Bobby in in Nazi land, and oh, wow. it's, it's set. Is this a Bobby Steele story or what? No, this is, is wow. Yeah, it's it's set in Brooklyn, in Flatbush, in the 1950s wow. and, and 1960s. And to quote from the book, World War II lingered like a mass hallucination on East 17th Street and large swaths of the surrounding borough. Uh, and, wow. And, uh, it's uh. You know, kind of like a historic novel, but it's also very black comedy. And Interesting. Wow. So, so what do you think about those people that think that um, that it didn't happen? That, oh, that the Holocaust yeah. didn't happen? They're, you know, they're just crazy conspiracy theorists, and because uh, um, I think I didn't say we, this. We talked about this last time. Yeah, because yes. it's really interesting to no, me. I was telling you that I had my own personal conspiracy theorist, who is a Holocaust denier, who believes that I work for the CIA and that I'm a spy master for the CIA, and that I ordered a hit. Spy master? Is that like spy master? Yeah, yeah and that yeah, I ordered a hit. On John Lennon, so. Uh, oh, I heard someone else did, not you. It wasn't you. Yeah, it was Stephen King. Is that who it was? Well, that's what some other conspiracy theorists. I, mean, I think what? today is the anniversary of the Holocaust Museum in New York. Oh, really? I didn't know. Wasn't Hoover? Did what? Didn't he have a file on him, John Lennon? 
Probably. Yeah, 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 Robert Rosen, NYC. At Condom. Condom. Okay. We'll be back. Condom.com.